you know, there's me and some of my other friends are the diehards that I want to stay here until the day I die, yeah. you know? Do you own property in Venice? No, I no. wish. God, I wish. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. Hopefully one day. I, I'm just like, I, I just wish one person in my family would have done that. Yeah. Just no one thought of that back then, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. not in my family anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I would kill to have property here. Are you yeah, kidding? Sure. Like, absolutely kill, dude. Yeah. State your name, where are you from? Josh Klassman. They also call me Bagel, and I am from Venice, California. What's one uh, piece of advice you would give to a young, aspiring artist or photographer coming up? For a photographer, definitely have your camera in your hand as much as you can, shoot it all. Especially like if you're shooting digital nowadays, like, fine, you can go to town and get thousands of photos. Yeah. Uh, whether it's film or digital, just shoot it all. Yeah. Absolutely, and I, that's an experience of me not shooting at all. Like, I'm stoked I have what I have. I lost a lot of shit, mm. and that crushes me because I know what was in them, and yeah. they were some cool shit that I'll know, I won't get back, the world will never see. Yeah. But I am fortunate and happy and stoked on what I have, and I would say shoot it all. Yeah. And for artists, like, I guess if you, we're doing a dividing line of photographer artists, but this goes for both as well. Rick Clayton gave me really good advice one time. It was like, just remember that those photos and art are yours and nobody else's and you could, you you do what you want with your photos and art and don't let anyone else tell you what the fuck to do with it. Yeah. Like, fuck them for telling you that. Yeah. You know, like. Good advice. Especially if it's like, you need to and you have to. Like, if someone's giving you great advice on something, sure, try it out, but like, yeah. Do, at the end of the day, do what the fuck you want to do, yeah. you know? So yeah, Rick Clayton gave me that advice and I was like, man, I will never forget that, yeah. you know? When did you first pick up a camera? When did you first start start doing uh, photography? When I, like I said earlier, uh, I scoot around when I was a kid, like 12 and shit, you know, like fucking around, even younger than that. Yeah. Like I just always liked cameras. And, and taking pictures, I found documenting interesting, really interesting. and. When I took it serious, was about 14. Okay. When I really was like, I want to get into this. Were there classes that you took or just all self-taught? I, I took classes. That was like 14. It was like junior high. Okay. High school, I took classes. And Larry Shapiro, who was our photo teacher, is like a, an incredible human being, an incredible yeah. teacher. He like then molded us where I was like, oh, he's teaching me shit that I don't know though. You know, and like he opened up the doors heavily on wanting to do different things. You know, we're like, like I said, my shit was always documenting. I love documenting. I always shoot in that style. But then he opened up my eyes to like, oh, time exposures and yeah. getting more into the artsy side of shit. And yeah. I fucking loved it. I learned a lot yeah. from that, those classes. So after, you said after um, after high school, you did two weeks at SMC, you dropped out. So yeah. is, w would it be safe to assume that you never took any photography classes after that? or uh, did you... no, no more photography classes okay. after that. Okay, so it was after that, you kind of just took what you learned from high school and, and just cultivated yeah. it, basically. In high school, too, my last year, I was able to take, I think it was like five photography classes because in 11th, I had taken care of all my bullshit hard classes. Oh, wow. And so I got all these electives. Wow. And so they're like, you can be a TA. And I was like, can I be a TA in photo? And they're like, yeah. I go, cool. So I got another photo class. And then I wrote for the school paper. Yeah. And the teacher at the school paper was like, and that was my English elective. And he was like, write two articles a week and I'll give you guys a C. This guy like did not want anything to do with us. Yeah. And we had a pass if you were like on the oarsman staff, you got to walk around and look for articles. I just run right back to the photo class. And then I just knock out two fucking articles. Yeah. And be like, there you go, and you just give us a C. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was the LA, LA Unified School District <laughs> back then. Like they would literally tell you, if you show up every day, we could pass you with a D. Yeah. They would tell the classroom that. Yeah. I was like, Oh, that's really cool. And then thinking like now older, I'm like, that is a horrible thing to say to a kid. You yeah, know? yeah. Failing kids in a, in a sense. Yeah. Or, and then my way of thinking was like, oh, so if I put forth like 
20% of effort, I can just get C's, no problem. That's yeah. easy enough. Yeah. And then getting all the photo classes, I'm like, well, that's easy. I'll just get A's because it's photography and yeah. I'm into it yeah. because it was something I was interested in, you know, yeah. like I was talking about earlier. Yeah. So with the photography then, um, when did it, when did it, start to take off for you to the next level after you graduated high school did i'm no. sure it took some, so, took some so time my whole thing oh yeah i did so my whole thing is i took all those pictures the the, the core stuff is like like the real core shit that people are used to seeing are very much like 87 to 94 let's say i have stuff that's earlier and later mm -hmm. but that's the real core stuff is in that compact time okay i those photos that you guys see have they sat in a fucking blue chest for fucking like 28 years or something and social media dude like a lot of the photographers those photographers i know that are well known that they became more well known because they got on social media and they took off yeah so i just started putting shit on there and people were like dude where have you been like hiding these i'm like in a blue chest for 28 years. <laughs> and they're like, you need to do something with that. Yeah. And it started catching on and I was like, cool, man. And I was stoked because it worked. It worked out well because the people, I think a pre like my friends knew I had them when I was younger. Yeah. And they're like, oh, those are cool shots. People are more appreciative to them now because now they're looked upon in a historical way. Oh yeah. You know, which that's cool. And so I sort of almost had the luxury of some stupid default of just like letting them sit there forever yeah. not really knowing what to do with them knowing not to ever get rid of them yeah. and then like it worked out on the back end yeah. of like oh cool instead of me wondering if they were going to be historical i just got to be like cool dude they are yeah. like thank god yeah. you know because yeah. fuck 99 percent of the reason why i took photos was because of that of like hoping it would mean something yeah i always say that i make no bones about it like everyone's like did you know? And I'm like, no, fuck yeah. no, I didn't know. But I like really hoped and I'm glad it did work out that way. Yeah. You know, that's cool because I really, history was the other one. That was another subject I would pay attention to because I yeah. really like history yeah. and documenting and history go hand in hand, you yeah. know? And that's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you too because I saw the photos and I feel like it captured a time and a moment and it was so it's so visceral and as as a viewer looking at it it's I like appreciate that, it's like man. wow you know it's like Thank you. this was really this was venice this was 80s yeah. venice this yeah. was early 90s venice and and you captivated that perfectly in my opinion you know and thank you and so uh yeah that's why i wanted to do the interview so um like one of the videos at the uh Venice History Museum that popped out to me was tuma smoking the joint yeah, yeah. he was like a young kid and i was like damn like that was some old school vintage it's, shit. It's funny too, because people are always like, that most people are like, oh, that's a rad photo. Like people love that shot. It's it's my personal, it's trip. It's my personal favorite picture I've ever taken. Wow. And it's like completely against everything that I usually liked it to do in a photo, which is I like to pull back and get yeah. the background. That yeah. thing's like right in his face, yeah. but I'm like, <laughs> but it was too good not to be right up in his face, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking like, if you zoom in on that picture, you can geek out on that thing and like, the way the smoke looks up his nose and it's yeah. like makes the coolest pattern and yeah. like the contrast and all that yeah. and his eyes i'm like dude you are so high in this thing it yeah. is in <laughs> fucking say you look like a cartoon character yeah and, sure. and you know then you have the people that are like oh it's a kid smoking a joint you took a picture of him i'm like yeah i was a kid taking a picture of a kid smoking a yeah. joint <laughs> i wasn't like fucking 50 dude yeah like i took that shit when i was like 17 or yeah. something you know yeah yeah no, it's definitely dope, dope photo. You know what I mean? Time, I appreciate that. Timeless. I would that say. picture is part of an entire session where it's them smoking a joint. Where I did three portraits of them. Yeah. Then I did photos of them together smoking it, yeah. and then a skate session in the pavilion afterwards. Yeah. It's great. It's like. 15 shots total yeah and i want to do a show one day of just those and blow them up all huge yeah. you know what i mean that'd be dope so was the pavilion like the skate park before we had the skate park that's right behind you yeah i mean for i mean for us it was because yeah. they they transformed into a skate park and when i say they it's like i i want i'll say we because that was a part of it but i didn't ever build the ramps there was friends of ours that were really good carpenters that built ramps and they would bring them down here and they hooked it up for everyone to skate yeah. you know yeah um, 
like I said earlier too, the, where the skate park is was the dancing oil site and it was the, the center block wall yeah. that I have a lot of shots of. And that was the Venice Breakwater wall that we all hung out at. Okay. And so the pavilion was technically the other side and you could have had the pavilion still and had the skate park if yeah. the city had chosen to do so. Yeah. You know, they tore the pavilion down way before the skate park obviously was built. Like it yeah. took a decade, I th right? Like, no, when was the skate park? Oh, nine. That's yeah, when I showed like, oh, yeah, almost a decade. So that's nine years. Yeah. And it would have been cool if they would have left the pavilion and actually did something with it. And yeah. then that with the skate park would have been off the charts. Dude. Yeah. It would have been insane. Yeah, for sure. I personally, because I surf here and we, Loved that no one really saw that we had a beach. Yeah. It was the beginning and the end, dude. When they tore that down, we're like, now that whole boardwalk right there with thousands of people, they know this exists. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, ugh, oh, you yeah. fuckers. Yeah. They gave away the secret. Oh, yeah. yeah. Full on, dude. Yeah. I wanted to ask um, uh, on camera, because I asked off camera, what, what, how, how did your voice end up getting <laughs> okay. how it is? So. One, my voice was fairly normal when I was younger. Yeah. And I started, God, I'm just trying to think, was it before? Before I was in punk bands, it started getting raspy. But I grew up in a circle of friends where we were extremely loud. Yeah. We all talked over each other <laughs> for decades and decades, yelling over each other, drunk as fuck. And all that affects you at some point. Yeah. And then add being in two different punk bands in, in a, like a, a few years time and singing completely wrong from the throat and not from the diaphragm, yeah. which my friend Jason Brown was like, dude, you should sing from here, not here. And I'm like, what does that mean? And like going, wow, I wish I would have listened to you. Yeah. Man, it was just an accumulation of all that. Yeah. And then I am a stage manager in live music production and so you are yelling insanely loud constantly on the radio and to people and because no one can hear anyone because it's loud as fuck yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so you just add all that in and you get this yeah. at some point yeah. <laughs> yeah when you were coming up the community that was out here it was actual community you would say correct yeah. do you still feel the community i feel there's certain aspects of the community that's still like that like the show that just happened Right yeah. over here, yeah. the community came out for it. Yeah. Um, there's definitely, there's definitely events and groups of people that put things on that feel communal. Yeah. That it, it's positive, it's good for everyone. Yes. Um, do I think it was more back then? I think it was more community driven on an individual level of people more looking out for each other as neighbors and yeah. as friends yeah you know what i mean where now it's it seems like it's more when people say community and communal it's more like oh the event was a very good event like there weren't like a bunch of events back then really yeah if you think about it, it wasn't like yeah. that every day was the event with the it was the people. venice was just an event yeah you know the venice itself was just an event every yeah. day and so I, I see it in two different ways of what the community was like in that aspect, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes yeah, sense no, to I, you, I, I but you like, mean. you know, the, it's just more like you looked out for your, your friends and your neighbors and that was the sense of community. That's definitely changed around here. Yeah. Only for the fact that like, we don't know most of our neighbors now, you yeah. know, and I'm like, I don't know my neighbors yeah. anymore. Like none of them. And, I'm cool with who lives next door to me. I don't think anything bad about them, but I'm not like trying to like look out for them or like, yeah. you know, anything like that. Like I did my old neighbors. Yeah. You know? With, um, with, with that being said, is it, uh, do you feel like there's a different type of, um, a different type of personality or approach that these neighbors that you have now have that probably aren't from Venice? I'm um, assuming? I mean, the, the ones I have now, they're, they're cool. They're, yeah. they, they just sort of do their own thing. Yeah. Um, there's always the people that come in with the attitude of entitlement, yeah. which is a huge thing of mine that I always mention too, is like entitlement's fucked. Yeah. And entitlement 
is it rich, poor, or middle class? It's just a mind frame of a human being. And, you know, I've seen every kind of entitled person come into this place, yeah. you know, or be from this place, yeah. you know? I mean, like my friends and I absolutely have had total moments of entitlement being from here. You <laughs> yeah, know, the sure. I am from Venice disease is yeah. a real thing. <laughs> you know, like my friends from Hawaii, they have the I am from Hawaii disease and yeah. us from Venice, we have the I am from Venice disease. Like, yeah. how do you know someone's from Venice? They will tell you. Yeah. Like, I fully admit that. How's this? I'm speaking for myself. I will not speak for my friends on that. I personally think we all have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, we also don't like the people with entitlement that come in guns blazing and they're like, I'm from here. And you're like, you've lived here six months. And they're like, you know, and all of a sudden they're like, Super Venice, you know, put on my cape. I got, I'm Super V. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you're like, yeah. just fucking kick back. I get it, dude. You're like, you partied with one of our friends and like, you think you're in now and it yeah. just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And there's that entitlement. Then there's the money entitlement. Yeah. You know, there's the people that move in that get the pad on the boardwalk and they go, why the fuck are there homeless here? It's like, because you moved to Venice? Yeah. That there's been homeless here for 35 years now. Yeah. You know, for the most part, dude, like yeah. you didn't, you didn't check it out before you bought the pad. Yeah. You only listened to the real estate agent that sold it to you. You didn't actually come down here yeah. and spend a couple nights and look at it. Yeah. I don't feel bad for you. Yeah. And there's that entitlement. You know, they're like, get these people out. It's like, you get the fuck out, dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For sure. So there's, I, I personally really dislike that. Yeah. It, yeah. It's shitty. Um, yeah. There's the entitlement of people that instantly want to hate people that move in that you're like, they might be cool actually yeah. and like they might get it and they might end up living there for 50 years and be like dude they were cool as fuck yeah you know and like i look at some of those people and be like don't be so entitled to just thinking they're bad because they didn't come from what we came from yeah. sometimes people will surprise you you know yeah. what i mean yeah. i try to be more in the middle on that than i was when i was younger i definitely wasn't like that when i was younger then i like I said, we had friends that moved in that a lot of other friends were like, oh, they didn't grow up in Venice their whole life. We're like, no, they've only lived there 10 years, but like through the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you would think it, right? Because yeah. they mesh with us. They seem like one of us. Yeah. You know? What's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? <laughs> oh my God. I would go back in time and slap the living shit out of myself <laughs> and that would be my advice. <laughs> I would look at me and just be like, scum. Bow and be like, wake the fuck up, yeah. was, would be my advice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you feel about the current day Venice? How do you feel about current day Venice? So you've been here, you've, hold on, before I say that, you've been here your whole life pretty much, right? Yeah. You've lived here your whole life? So, but, so, so what do I think of current, I mean, we sort of touched on that though, where it, it's, it's like, it, the, the coolness is still there if you know where to go yeah. and, if you, and, and if you know the right people. Yeah. And outside of that, it's just like the mini Disneyland come to fucking Venice and see the boardwalk shit. And yeah. That, that's always sort of been the same. Mm -hmm. It just seems a little cheesier nowadays. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's even that is starting to lose its cool where before it was like, it, the carnival atmosphere was wet with the wildness, you know what I mean? It was yeah. fucking, even to the like, like the beginning of the 90s, you know, it was fucking like, you could feel it getting like packed here, but it was pit bulls and Rottweilers, you know, it was all that fucking shit. There's still helicopters yeah. in the middle of the day, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And that's ch changed, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just sort of more run of the mill now yeah. where I wish they would let it be a little bit funkier. Yeah. You know? Um, so I don't remember exactly when this police station behind me has been here. Has that been here since you've been a, a the, kid? Or so when that, that's oh. the, that station was in the pavilion. Oh. Their substation was a part of the pavilion. And that's always the big joke that I say that like, we did all of our, most of our dumbest shit hanging out at the pavilion in the breakwater yeah. and hiding from the cops at their own substation. <laughs> it was like the most bizarre thing, you know yeah. what I mean? Their substation was like an old shuffleboard area. Yeah. My friend's dad who took this picture, Rod Bradley, he's got pictures of it, where there's like an LAPD paddy wagon. Mm -hmm. and it's like the shuffleboard area. So that substation was 
my, I don't know if it was exactly right there, but it would have been somewhat close to that area, maybe a little bit closer to here actually, okay. where these walls are. So more than likely, I would imagine if the substation was right there, they would have they would have probably known about some of the shit that was going down that just didn't come I'm, out. I'm, I have no doubt they fucking knew more than we ever thought. We were like yeah. just oblivious to it. They were probably just watching us going, you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have to think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask you one more thing before I do. Uh, is there anything you would like to add? Um... I'm just trying to think of something about this place that might be a big misconception. I just, I, how's this? I understand why people romanticize the era I grew up in, because it is a wild, crazy era. Yeah. And it's sort of like the way my friends and I always romanticize like the fucking like Goodfellas movies and shit like that. Yeah. And I get that and the lore of like, oh, that shit was super cool. Yeah. And it was, and it was wild. And it was great to be the age that my friends and I were during that time, for sure. Um, I want to say that for the most part, that doesn't really exist that much now the way it existed then. So I trip when people move here, the ones that think it is still like that, and they're like, where's the rootin' tootin' crazy shit? And you're like, that like happened then, dude. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? And you know, there's, we have arrested development here. We have it heavily. It's yeah. a big thing here, that whole Peter Pan syndrome and all that shit, which comes with beach communities mostly, yeah. this one specifically. But I also live in the now. And I told a friend this recently that I was like, man, some of you think it's like 1985 now, dude, and it's 2024. And like, yeah. I post old pictures and old stories, but I live now. Yeah. I live, I'm thoroughly aware of what's happening. And I don't know, there's people that think it's still that, and it, it, they don't click with this place because of that. They're out of balance with yeah. it in a way. Yeah. And they need to be a little bit more aware of like, oh yeah, dude, there's crazy shit. It's always going to be nuts here in some kind of a way for sure. Yeah. I think personally, it will always be that place. Yeah. But it's not as prevalent as back then. And they need to remember that it's not as crazy as it was then on yeah. that level. Uh, and my last question for you is what is what is the most valuable lesson that you've learned in your life? <sighs> I'm honestly cuz I'm I'm a huge believer in this and like I do my best every day to put myself in check with it is just fucking have humility. Like if you fuck up, own up. Yeah. If there's something that you can laugh at yourself about, laugh about it. Yeah. Don't take yourself too seriously and there's definitely been tons of moments in my life where I took myself too seriously and my friends did yeah. where we shouldn't have yeah. and the older I get I'm just glad that I've always embraced humility and I super embrace it now I will say my friends and I in this area very much we had reasons to be very cocky when we were younger yeah. but a lot of us also had humility at the same time yeah. and then some of us also grew more into it the older we got yeah. and got less cocky and yeah. that kind of stuff. I would just say humility, definitely. You know, I've learned enough lessons to fucking have been humbled gnarly where I needed to learn the lesson and just be like, all right, man, lick your wounds and like have humility with it and just yeah. like learn from it. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. Right on, dude. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank yeah, you. those were cool questions yeah. for sure, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah.